Welcome back to another vlog. I wanted to specifically make a video about minimal makeup. So curating a capsule makeup collection, which is something that I do. So as well as having a capsule wardrobe, I have a curated capsule makeup collection, which is something that I've done for years and I'm quite obsessed with. I'm forever tinkering with it and playing around with it. And I wanted to talk about just minimalist makeup in general, how I do it personally, and share tips that I've learned over the years with you as well. So the first thing that I will say about curating a more minimalist makeup bag is that it works in the very similar way to a capsule wardrobe. You need to figure out what your personal style is, what it is that you actually like, what suits you, what suits your lifestyle, and what looks good on you, what is flattering in terms of colors and textures, all that kind of stuff. So think about what it is that you are actually wanting to go for. Personally, I like quite a feminine look, but I like it quite natural and more on the prettier side, I would say, as opposed to that dark, sultry, sensual kind of look. That's just not really my thing, nor is too much makeup. I very much want to look like myself, like I'm not really wearing any makeup, just me, but you know, a bit better. And the other thing that I will say about curating a minimalist makeup collection is to take your time with it. So I know how tempting it is to watch makeup routine videos or influencer accounts, see what they're using and just buy that and think it's gonna look exactly the same on you as it does on them. I've been there, we've all been there. Try to refrain from that. By all means, go out and test products but it is always better to go into a shop and actually try the products and get the experts that work for that brand to try it on your skin and then wear it for the rest of the day and see how it actually wears if you actually like it. If you can get a sample of that thing, even better. That will save you so much money in terms of just ordering stuff online, going out, buying stuff, without trying it first. Another tip that I've got is to be aware of the sunk cost fallacy. The sunk cost fallacy is when we think that a product is actually worth more than it is because we've spent money on it. So we think that because we've invested in it, it's gonna be a waste for us to throw it away, give it away, get rid of it, so we keep it. And that is one of the reasons that we end up with these makeup bags that are just full of stuff that we never use. That isn't my personal approach. My makeup bag, here it is. I'm gonna go through it with you in detail. My makeup bag is full of products that I use most days. There isn't a product in here that I haven't used in the last three months. And that's the way that I like to keep it. So for me, I and I will say this, I do like luxury makeup. I do like nice things. I love beautiful things. I love beautiful packaging. I like high quality products but it's not about having as many of those as possible. It's about having the right products. So in terms of price per use, they're really good value for money. Okay, so in terms of my personal routine, it doesn't tend to change. So I don't really switch things around for day to night. Um, it tends to stay the same all the time. I might add a little bit more eyeshadow sometimes, not really, not usually ever. It tends to be the same stuff every single day, but I'll take you through the maximum that it ever is. And it's also worth saying to you that I do have my eyebrows microbladed and I've had my lips blushed, though I have been told I'm supposed to stop doing that because it's really bad for you. Um, so I may not get that done again. But yeah, so when I you know, wake up first thing in the morning, I do have color on my lips and my eyebrows are shaped and they have a little bit of color in there as well. So I'm not completely barefaced. 
The first thing that I will go in with is eyeshadow. I always do my eyes first because this is kind of how I was taught when I used to be really into makeup and I used to wear very heavy makeup from MAC specifically. I used to go and get my makeup done there. It was super heavy, super intense, and they always did my eyes first. And I just have always done it the same way. Current favorite eyeshadow at the minute is this very light one which you can see what I actually use in this palette. It's this very, very light one from Charlotte Tilbury. I love this palette. I also have the Charlotte Tilbury brush. I have two of her brushes. I will leave a link to all of these products. It's quite a, um, it's like a, a fluffy eye brush. And I use the light eyeshadow from this palette. My understanding is that this is not available anymore. If I was to go for a new palette, I do personally love palettes because they're very versatile. You can get a lot out of them. I really like the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk palette and I think this color is part of that range. Um, but I also use the bronzer in here as well, which I love. But start with eyeshadow. So I go in with that and I sweep that all over my eyes. There isn't really much of a method to this. I just like to make sure that my eyes are covered. I like that it's got a bit of glitter in it and it brightens them. Next is another Charlotte Tilbury product. Like with my capsule wardrobe, I am brand loyal. So I do have maybe like three to four different makeup brands. I stick to those, I love those. So they're gonna see a lot of brands repeated throughout this. This is the Charlotte Tilbury, the Feline Flick. It's a liquid eyeliner. For a long time, I used to wear black liquid eyeliner on my eyes. I am a graduate of The Hills fan base and Lauren Conrad basically is my cat eye liquid liner inspiration and has been for a decade probably. Um, but I have recently made a switch to brown eyeliner and I am loving it. I'm loving that it's a little bit softer. It's a little bit more natural. I love this. I love that it is just like a felt tip pen. It goes on really smoothly and it feels easy to correct if I make an error. So it doesn't feel too scary to use because I don't consider myself as a very skilled makeup person. So I like things to be as simple to use as possible. After that, I will use eyelash curlers. These, oh, I just, I just love. I use an eyelash serum on my eyes lashes at night as well. I'm big into having big, fluffy, just dramatic lashes. It's a look that I personally really, really like. So I use these. These are from Shu Umera. I have seen some recently in Rouge that are really, really beautiful. They're like a, a gold metallic kind of color. Um, and I basically get these, open them up, get them as close to my eyelid as possible, press down, hold it for like 10 seconds and you, you get to see a really nice curl. Opens up the eyes. Personally, I love that tool. Then I go in with the Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara, which is my all time favorite mascara for me, for the lash look that I like, which is probably like a Bridget Bardot kind of style. I don't think this can be beaten. I absolutely adore it. And I go in heavy. <laughs> like I just, I just cake that stuff on. Um, it might be a little bit too much depending on what your personal preference for lash style is. But I love dramatic mascara and I absolutely adore this one. As I said, I have my eyebrows microbladed, so I don't necessarily need to do too much in terms of shaping them or coloring them. I could definitely just use a clear brow gel. Personally, I like a gel over a pencil because I find it's easier to use, it's user friendly. I just like it, but I do use a tinted one. At the minute, I'm using the Charlotte Tilbury Legendary Brow in soft brown. But again, go into the shop, let them try it, let them color match you and see what you think. I love that this gives a really natural look. I don't like my brows to be too intense, but I'd say I'd like them, I like them quite medium. Like I don't like them really soft and natural. I like something there, but I don't like them super intense. And, and I feel like this gives a really nice, natural, soft look. It's very difficult to get it wrong with this product, which again, I, that's just music to my ears in terms of makeup. I don't do foundation. I am a tinted moisturizer till I die kind of girl. And I have tried the majority of them. 
Uh, I was using the NARS Radiant Tinted Moisturizer for a really long time. I enjoyed that. I wanted a cruelty-free alternative. All of my makeup bag is cruelty-free, by the way. And this is the best tinted moisturizer I have ever tried, much to the dismay of my wallet because it is ridiculously expensive. But in terms of price per use, yes, it's worth it. And I absolutely love it. I think I went in the Bon Marche like five times to try all different moisturizers and wear them throughout the day. And this one for me, the Chantikai Just Skin with SPF 15 in was the clear standout winner. I don't like the caked on foundation look. I don't like the way that that feels on my skin. I want my skin to shine through. If you've followed me for a while, you'll know that I'm a skincare addict. Like that's my thing. That's what I get really, really excited about. So I don't want to cover that up. I want my skin to, to shine through. This gives a really beautiful, very natural, very soft glow. I really like the color range. I love the texture. I love how long it lasts. I've been really happy with it. I would highly recommend it. So I go in with this all over my face. I put a blob on my fingers. I am a fan of putting on makeup with my fingers where possible. I put a blob on my fingers, rub it together, and then just pat it around my face like you would a moisturizer. I tend to direct the majority of it on the center of my face and then blend it outwards because I feel like this gives a more natural effect. And I think that's a tip that I picked up in a beauty um, a makeup routine video once upon a time. After that, if there is anything left to cover, I don't use this every single day, but I will go in with a concealer. I will also on some days just wear concealer and not bother with the tinted moisturizer. So I switch them around, but as I said, today I'm showing you like the full things as far as I would ever go with makeup. I'm currently using the Elia True Skin Concealer, which I really, really like. I've been using this for a few months now. Again, it goes on the skin very beautifully, very naturally. I would say that it was a medium coverage. So it is, you can use it on both. You can use it like under your eyes and you can use it on blemishes as well. I'm not someone who ever goes for full coverage. So even if I have a blemish on my face, the likelihood is that you will probably see some of it. And I'm okay with that that's fine. But I tend to put um, like three dots of concealer underneath my eyes on any blemishes, maybe a little bit on my nose that I want to cover. Then I go in with my fingers again and just pat it in and blend it in until it looks natural. At this point, I will go in with Lano Lips. This, I talked about this in my Substack letter recently. If you're not subscribed to my Substack letter, I do a what's been adding value letter at the end of every month. And I put my favorite beauty additions in there. This was in my what's been adding value Substack letter recently. And I did hail it as the best lip balm I have ever tried. And I stand by that. It is wonderful. I really love the vintage style of the packaging, but it moisturizes the lips so beautifully and it gives a really lovely sheen to them as well. So I'm not really into the whole big glossy lips kind of look, but this gives a nice mid range sheen to them. Especially if you do have a lip blush, you can just swipe this over the top and it will give a beautiful finish. My lips I have been paying more attention to lately. For a long time, I was purely lip balm, but more recently, I've got a little bit more into lip products after seeing what my French friends can do with such things here in Paris. And I have purchased the Charlotte Tilbury Lip Cheat Lip Liner and the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Lipstick, the matte one. I love both of them. I'm wearing both of them a lot. I love that these colors, the Pillow Talk range from Charlotte Tilbury is designed to be flattering for everyone because again, I want my lips to look like mine. I'm not into very dramatic looks as much as I love seeing them on other people. For me, that's just not something that I'm into. I find these very user-friendly. It's hard to go wrong with them. 
I love the packaging, especially the lipsticks. Like I love the gold packaging of this. I think it's so beautiful. Final touches to my face. I go back in with the Charlotte Tilbury Full Face Palette, which I said has been discontinued. As a replacement, I am looking at the Sculpt and Glow palette from Charlotte Tilbury and also the Hourglass Ambience Lighting palette. I'm looking at those two. I'm not sure what I'm gonna go for. Right now, I'm very happy with this. Um, so in terms of bronzer, I have a brush. This is the second brush that I've got. It's a Charlotte Tilbury one. I think it's the Sculpt brush, but I will find out and leave it in the description for you. I'll leave a link. So I just dab that in there two, three times, and then I apply it to the apples of my cheeks. So I'll just do a little smile so I can see where those like bally bits are that I want to highlight. And I'll just dab those on and then blend it in. The final, final touch is this multi-stick from Elia, a brand that I'm really liking, very clean beauty, cruelty-free, vegan makeup kind of brand. I think that you'll like it. Um, yeah, I'm enjoying the products that I've been trying from them. I have their multi-stick. I have it in the color Dreamer, which again, I got color matched with. I tried it in the store, so I knew that I loved it actually on my skin before I bought it. So over the top of my bronzer, I will give a little swipe of my cheeks. Again, just the top, just the apples of my cheeks. I will swipe with this and then just use my fingers to pat it in. I like that it gives a nice sheen, but it still feels natural. And that's it. It takes about 15 minutes from beginning to end to do my full makeup routine. I love all the products, very, very happy with them. I will be using them right until the very end. They feel like staples, they're high quality, they're cruelty free, they're in line with my values. I recommend them. I will leave them in a link if you want to go and, and try them. But hopefully that gives you an idea of how a minimalist makeup collection works in practice. I hope it gives you a little bit of inspiration. Personally, I love watching videos like this and I love looking at um, minimalist makeup collections on Pinterest and things like that, just figuring out what my real go-to products are. Um, so yes, hopefully you have enjoyed it. Let me know what yours are. I really want to hear in the comments what your like staple products are or what your situation is right now with makeup and maybe how you know how you want to change it, what it is that you want to, what you want to do instead. Thank you so much for watching as always. Look forward to chatting with you in the comments and I will see you soon.